Thank you very much for this. Uh, and our last, last but not least speaker is Dr. Atalia uh, Shargai, who holds a PhD in history from this university, Tel Aviv University, and is currently a research fellow at the Latin American unit at the Harry uh, Truman Institute, uh, Research Institute at the Hebrew University of, of Jerusalem. Uh, Dr. Shagai research interest focus on the 20th century inter-American relations, migration in the Americas, oral history and cultural history. And her paper today is titled In the Americas, Costa Rica as a Geography of Meaning for U.S. Americans. Thank you, Ofa. Um, and thank you, Anna and Stefan, for uh, inviting me. It's great to be back in uh, 496 in Gilman. <laughs> I already feel 10 years younger. Uh, yeah, home sweet home. Uh, what is that? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, hi. So uh, I would like to talk about uh, geography of meaning, as Costa Rica is a geography of meanings, and I will elaborate on this term later, which I borrowed from uh, Michaela Benson and Karen O'Reilly, but let me first rephrase it of many meanings. Uh, for different kinds of people, of different ages, of different genders, of different walks of life, ideologies, on a various period of time in the second half of the 20th century, so it's not just one meaning, but it's many meanings, many uh, different meanings. And first I would like to briefly put the U.S. immigration to Costa Rica in, in context, as this uh, counter count of migration is not very well known. If you would like to situate yourself in, on the map, many people not really sure where is Costa Rica. Uh, but following World War II and against the backdrop of the Cold War, U.S. Hegem hegemony in Central America simultaneously expanded and became contested. Correspondingly, the presence of U.S. Americans in Costa Rica gained promise, promise, prominence sorry, uh, and became controversial. Uh, where is the Costa Rican censuses conducted between the 1950s and the 1970s estimated the number of U.S. Americans in Costa Rica uh, in two or three thousand people? Senior U.S. Americans in the country estimated that there are about 20 to 30 thousand people uh, in the country, uh, which rendered them the second largest minority in the country, in Costa Rica, after Nicaraguan citizens. Uh, who were these people? The overseer American is the average American, stated Harlan Cleveland in his 1960 research about U.S. American abroad. It might be more accurate to say that the U.S. immigrant post-World War II was perceived as part of the backbone of U.S. society, most of these immigrants were middle class and white, typically younger and more educated uh, than the average uh, U.S. population, a profile that created what sociologist Adolf Finifter called psychological mobility toward immigration. Yet a great diversity in terms of background of, and walks of life, of life characterized the US, American who, U.S. Americans who arrived in Costa Rica following World War II, either as rep representative of U.S. organization and thus part of the U.S. Uh, establishment and the broadening in U.S. influence in Central America, or as individuals who in fact sometimes opposed uh, the rising U.S. Uh, global hegemony and sought to, dist to distance themselves from it geographically and ideologically. Uh, the first group include, inter alia, uh, employees of the U.S. administrations and U.S. Of U and representative of U.S. Co uh, cooperation along with their dependents. You can see them here at the 4th of July celebration at the U.S. Embassy in Costa Rica built after uh, the Monticello uh, in Virginia. Uh, U.S. missionaries who were part of the infiltration of U.S. Protestant missions. Here you can see John Stam, or John Stam, sorry, or as he called himself now, Juan Stam, in Guanacaste with his congregation. Uh, and the U.S. women who were uh, married to, US, uh, to Costa Rican men following World War II and came to Costa Rica. On the other hand, following the war, Costa Rica became also a haven for U.S. A haven for US dissidents. Uh, the Quakers are most uh, 
known. Uh, they established, they left the U.S. Uh, due to the resistance to the Korean War, and they established the uh, colony of Monteverde in 1953. Uh, in the late 1960s and early 1970s, they were uh, followed by uh, youth dissidents, uh, hippies, counterculturists, uh, who were objected to uh, Vietnam War and uh, arrived in uh, and arrived in Costa Rica. So they were both mainstream uh, culture and counterculture people who formed a tiny yet interesting and significant current of migration. I could uh, identify it with Aya uh, researching a very tiny friction of uh, migration yet uh, arguing that it that it is important. Uh, and indeed, migration in the Americas is commonly examined as a south-north migration, but I think it's uh, reversing the lens and the exploration of north-south uh, flow of US Americans enables us to examine both the subjective and the structural aspect of such phenomenon and to situate it within uh, a broader cultural and political framing of both US and Central America during the Cold War and uh, the co conceptualization of new forms and patterns of migrations, sometimes described as amenity migration or lifestyle migration, and the broader term uh, for the phenomenon that encap encapsulates many forms of mig migratory flows by relatively affluent uh, individuals of all ages, moving either part-time or full-time to places they perceived as offering a better quality of life, usually in the sense of a new lifestyle rather than job opportunities or other conventional kind of uh, economic betterment. Uh, better in what way? It brings us back to the definition of geography of meaning, which I also brought from uh, Karen O'Reilly and, Mich and Michaela Benson, a British uh, political scientist, and they define geography of meaning as a destination of migration that beyond economic and political improvement carries the promise of holding certain meanings for the migrants in terms of the potential for self-realization. Uh, so to say that Costa Rica was a geography of meaning doesn't really say much. I would like to uh, uh, represent three examples of uh, such meanings that were typical, but they were not exclusive. I mean, there were many, many other. And the first uh, meaning was Costa Rica as a new frontier. Uh, here you can see uh, the cover of a book by U.S. Uh, settlers, Daryl Cole Christensen, who arrived in Costa Rica in 1956. Uh, his father, when he reached what he called the right age, his father presented him with the opportunity to go either to college or to move to uh, Costa Rica or Central America, and what he termed start in again. So the uh, Cole Christensen family purchased a 130 square acres farm in the border of uh, Costa Rica and Panama. And they've established a diverse uh, agriculture, uh, agricultural initiative. And in his memoir, which is called A Place in the Rainforest, Settling the Costa Rican Frontier, uh, that was published with the uh, University of uh, Austin, University of Texas in Austin in 1996. He reflected on his feelings uh, arriving in Costa Rica, and he explicitly linked the uh, experience of the uh, frontier in uh, 19th century uh, U.S. with the conquering of the Costa Rican frontier. And he say, here we have immediate relationship relationships with natural forces as and as individuals, we have remarkable freedom. The word freedom, will, I think, will come back in all the experiences, uh, to act without many of the restraints of social conventions. Phrases that have been used in the past to describe such freedom are like individualism and the pioneering spirit. So Costa Rica is a new frontier for, uh, for U.S. American, while the frontier in Costa Rica, in, sorry, in the U.S. was allegedly closed in the 19th century, here in Costa Rica, and as usual, they're going to the frontier and moving back in, uh, moving back in uh, space, is moving, back in, moving back in space, is moving back in time, also to a different kind of time, more, n not so strict, not so linear. So Costa Rica as a new frontier was a major drop of, uh, of meaning for Costa Ricans. Uh, let's look at another uh, drop of the pretty American. 
following World War II and in the first years of the Cold War, youth women were accorded with enormous significance in the project of spreading the youth's way of life and casting it as superior to the Soviet ones. Historian Emily Rosenberg stresses that various models of youth femininity became a crucial component in the Cold War and, uh, and an emblem of such superiority. In uh, 1952, Harper's article by, again, Harlan Cleveland, entitled The Pretty Americans, How, How Youth Wives Behave Abroad, he defines youth women as the opposite of the youth, men, in a clear reference to the bestseller The Ugly American. Uh, and he stated, it's a powerful motive, this sense of personal responsibility for foreign relations of the United States, and its lack can blot the reputation of the world's most powerful nation. But no threatening or something, no pressure. So youth women, youth women in Costa Rica have formed part of a greater scheme to, wear, to wield youth femininity as a political tool. And the members of the U.S. Uh, Women's Club in Costa Rica, that here you can see a book of recipes by them, and you can see the uh, logo, which stated Servicio Amistad, Service and Friendship. Uh, in 19, for, it was uh, formed in uh, 1940 and soon became the largest uh, U.S. organization in Costa Rica. And in 1963, just uh, before the visit of uh, U.S. Uh, President uh, Kennedy in Costa Rica, they brought a letter to uh, uh, Costa Rican president, Francisco Orlich, and they stated it would be of extreme interest for us to have you tell us the plans your government has made for President Kennedy's visit and what our organization can do uh, to make it a complete success. As always, you will find us ready and willing co to cooperate in any way. So, uh, deprived of their, of their position, of their professional uh, positions and their political positions, they saw themselves as goodwill ambassadors of the U.S. in Costa Rica. Um, and now, let's go. I'll go briefly because I can. Uh, I see that we are lack of time. Let's go to the opposite direction, or to the opposite uh, population of uh, the U.S. Uh, women's club, to the counterculture uh, people. Uh, in the early 1970s, Sharon Klee, let's see. Ah, okay, here you can see another beautiful picture. President of the U.S. women's club handed a donation to the Costa Rican uh, uh, Minister of Culture. <laughs> and, okay, hold on. Uh, and uh, the counterculture experience. What was the meaning of, the, of Costa Rica for counterculture? Uh, people, right? In the early 1970s, Sharon Klee uh, lived in a big, uh, com in a big uh, spiritual community of artists in Los Angeles. Uh, the members, aged 20 to 40, congregated around the charismatic, charismatic guru and immersed themselves in the study of Eastern religious. In 1972, Klee and her friends had come to the conclusion that they could not achieve their desired peace of mind in the militaristic and materialistic uh, US and decided to leave. And here, how she depicted 40 years later, how she scaled, how she made the hierarchy of the reason for, reasons for choosing uh, Costa Rica. Let's hear her. But you can also. What? What's it? Go to the Avad. Okay. Ma? Is it open for Okay, let's see. I, I love, love the tropics. tropics. I've always had a fascination for the tropics. Have you ever been? Before? I had never lived in the tropics before, but I loved the the beauty of nature in the tropics. And also, um, Costa Rica has no army. And I thought that was very beautiful and brave in this world to not have an army. And also, um, dollars go a lot farther in Costa Rica. We could buy land and settle down and, and support ourselves while still being free. Uh, it's a running gag in this. Yeah. So what, what she's actually talking about is what is the meaning for Costa Rica for them. And she said, she further said, 
we wanted to create an utopia. For us, Costa Rica could have become an utopia. We couldn't do it in the States. We could have, do it, we could have done it in Costa Rica. Why? Because it's beautiful. It's peaceful. They like uh, US Americans. They liked them back in the 1970s. They don't like them that much now. And it's cheap. I mean, the property, this is a picture of the place that the property uh, used to be. They bought it in $3,000 in uh, 1973. It was put to the market in 2002 for $3 million. So, but, but for them, it was, it, it enabled them freedom. It enabled them freedom for the rat race of the US. They say, there were no standards in Costa Rica. We could just, you know, there was no, we didn't have to meet any, any standards. We could just, we could just live there. Uh, so I'll just summarize uh, quickly. Um, better self was disillusioned from the possibility of creating a utopia. When I interviewed her in uh, 2009, she said, I now know that Utopia is only in your heart. It doesn't have to do anything with a specific uh, place. Costa Rica changed. Uh, changed. It was didn't welcome U.S. American as much as it did in the 1970s. Uh, Cole Christensen, uh, who was uh, uh, involved in extensive agriculture and deforestation, uh, completely reborn again and joined as an ecological movement in uh, Costa Rica and he, he sold his farm to US uh, universities as a research uh, station and then went back to the States. Um, the Women's Club is still the largest uh, organization, social organization in uh, Costa Rica, but most of its members are Costa Ricans now. Um, that's it. The, that's, a, that's the meaning of Costa Rica for North America. Thanks so much.